Hey there, everybody. Today I'm going to go over XDAC. Um, I'm going to do a quick review. It's uh, not a super ton to go over, but it, it, it's a very interesting project. Um, different and uh, that'll most anything that I've seen uh, and very, very smart. Um, with as many ICO reviews as I've done, you can tell the, the market's really kind of saturated. There's um, you know, companies coming out constantly, and this is trying to capitalize on that. Um, a DAC is like a DAO. Uh, DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. This is kind of like a an offshoot of that's a decentralized autonomous company. And from what I've looked at, this looks it, like I said, it looks really smart. It looks really cool. Um, it harkens back to the, uh, you know, the people that made the most money during the gold rush were the people that sold pickaxes and, uh, and equipment to the miners. Um, so this is going to help people set up those companies and set up, you know, to do their ICOs and all that. So they're really going to capitalize on the startups and a lot of the, the frenzy that has happened before. And I think it's going to happen again now that the market's starting to get a, get a, get a little spark. Um, it allows people to set up their decentralized company very quickly, very easily, uh, censorship resistant because they're using blockchain technology. If you read over this, which everyone should do their own research, not a financial advisor, not financial advice, read the white paper, look over this, um, and do your own research. Um, it, the word, they use a lot of the big words in this instead of using simple words. Um, well, they don't say blockchain. They say uh, decentralized uh, ledger technology, but that's just blockchain. Um, it's just one of the little things I noticed about this. Um, also, I wanted to say thanks to everyone who's uh, been subscribing. We're getting we're over 1,500, getting close to 2,000 subscribers, and I haven't even been at that this you know at this that long. So I really kind of blown away by it. I appreciate if you're watching the video to uh, hit the like button, uh, leave a comment, and uh, and hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get out uh, videos at least you know one or two a week. I'm still working full time for Xbox, so it's it's difficult, but um, I really try to try to get out at least one or two a week. Um, getting back to XDAC, uh, like I said, it's a, a subclass of a DAO. Um, it's built on EOS. Um, is the, the bottom layer uh, and then it's built on top of that with a layer of smart contracts and uh, and a layer for dApps it, it's it, like I said it's, it seems like a really smart and good idea um, XDAX is a decentralized autonomous company uh, created and operated on a XDAX platform or multiple human autonomous agent owners and a mix of both that run a shared common purpose. Basically, like I said, they use a lot of big words in this, um, in the web, in the website, and the pitch deck, and all that. It's basically anyone can start a uh, a a DAC or a decentralized company, like within a minute minutes, they can set it up. Um, they can use the blockchain, uh, the blockchain technology. They can uh, have smart contracts. The payroll, everything is uh, is handled by uh, by XDAC. Um, they're kind of partner up with the the companies and helping them get started. Um, it's a it's a, a mixture of human um, like uh, you know owners and employees mixed with AI and uh, and autonomous. Uh, robots, smart contracts, and, 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 and AI. So it's really, really cool. Um, problems and the solutions, it's, it's pretty self-evident. Uh, most of the problems with traditional companies is it's basically government and lawyers, uh, regulations, and so on, all that kind of stuff. Um, which, another point that they make is you can have a successful company where you're at. You could have created it. You could have worked on it. You could have brought it to the point where you want to expand it.
but then expanding it in a global market is just so difficult and so costly that it's not worth it or if you try to it can actually put your 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 business under um because the different jurisdictions are so different um and what you can do in one place you can't do in another uh i mean i see that in microsoft we uh ever since the the gdpr was passed for for europe there's we have to handle people from europe so differently or microsoft can get fined you know like millions of dollars um whereas if you're from the u.s you can call you know there's it, it's way easier um your your, your privacy is not important in america um but getting back to that uh registration loader compliance uh you know state taxes federal taxes all that kind of stuff uh versus uh instant creation of decentralized company automated governance and uh dispute resolution proof of work incentive um the dispute resolution it works like a lot of other blockchains they have a like a uh a government a, a governance panel that's part of the ecosystem that will uh settle the dispute most of them have a uh, like a redundancy where those be another another group that will will uh will validate the first group's um findings just so that there, it's look it's more fair um fundraising is through ico and there's no banks involved merchant accounts payrolls local investors office space external centralized productivity tools once again computers office furniture stuff but that's external centralized productivity tools um fundraising through ICOs, uh, crypto payment processing automatic payrolls support for dApps, and internal autonomous agents which once again like i said uh like ai and, and smart contracts um the features the governance and disputes the xdac platform establishes digital jurisdiction over xdacs created uh operated by business owners disputes with third parties are resolved expediently and objectively through a decentralized dispute representative board drb which is like i said it's um most blockchain companies like i said they have a uh, um, special users that have a high uh, high credibility rating that would uh, randomly come together so they're not connected to anything and then they would um look at the two different parties and settle on it and most of them even have a backup or a second team reviews the first team's findings and then they usually agree with it or don't disagree with it um liability fund it's a, a fund set up that um makes sure that a certain portion of everything that comes in goes into an equity fund so that if the uh if the debt to equity ratio uh is Basically, if they start to look like they're going to default, they have um, that backup. Um, proof of work performance rating um, allows for automated rating system to track the effectiveness of team members, which goes along with the project and team management. Ownership and token issuance. Um, owners of the option issue a certain number of voting or non-voting tokens uh, through smart contracts and distribute them between the owners uh, or public uh, via ICOs for token sale. Payment processing, the most important part of each company is payment processing and the use of digital wallet technology. An XDAC platform will create a wallet with merchant tools for each XDAC upon establishment of a company on the platform. So if you create the company, they also get you set up with wallets and all that. It's very detailed. They do do a lot um, in, in, uh, in support and helping companies get set up. So I think it's gonna. I think it'll be very, very uh, successful. Another reason I'll go over here in, in a minute. Architecture, like I said, it's built on the the EOS platform, which is supposed to be, you know, awesome. Next to free, you're free. Um, Feeless. Um, the uh, next one's like a public smart contract layer, implementation of key components, creating governance, decent uh, and apps, and autonomy, the autonomous agents. Um, <clears throat> and then the XTAC client it's a, like a user interface that's going to uh, bring all the uh, the decentralized applications together the autonomous everything into one place 
Um, initial plan is to build a website and desktop applications for you as your interaction with the XDAC platform. Tokenomics on the token sale. It's Ethereum, it's an ERC20. That's the ticker name. Um, there's 100 million, which is not a lot. Um, token sale volume is 40 million. Soft cap is 1,500 ETH. Hard cap is 35,005. Token price is uh, 0 0.001. So you get 1,000 for one ETH. Minimum purchase is 0.1. So that's like a nickel. No, the, the Ethereum is actually up today. It's I think it broke 300, so it's a lot better. Um, Pre-sale, this is not bad. This is where you really have to look. The pre-sale bonus is 45%. 40 would be better, but 45% is not terrible. Um, it's not, I mean, some offer 90% and don't really talk about it. They put it right out here. It's 45%. Uh, round one is 20% bonus. That's excellent. Uh, then 15, 10, and zero for round four. So not giant bonuses to uh, to incentivize people to dump, you know, once it comes out of ICO, um, which is good. Very, very good. Token distribution of funds, 40% go to the token sale, 20% to the community for airdrops, stack team members, and arbitrals. 20% early team backers and the advisors. So that's a chunk. It's a little high. This is for six months. I would like to have seen a year, years better, but six months, you know, it's not terrible. They, they, at least they're, they're locked up. Um, foundation is the 25th foundation, which is vested for a year, so that's good. Um, now, the use, which is one of the things I said I think will help their success 40% uh, goes to research and development, which is good for what they're wanting to develop, 20% um, to operation expenses, and 5% to legal, 5% reserve, 25% to marketing and community management. That is going to help the success, I think, of the platform a lot more. Um, most projects, they, they really don't put enough into marketing, and it really bites them in the butt later on. Um, I know that, you know, talking to, to some ICOs, because once they come out, they they don't have that, that anything there to budget as far as, like, bounties or or uh, helping to get the word out on, on their project. Uh, so a lot of times it can even stall. 25% is huge. Usually it's 10, 5 on the low end, 10. 12, 15, I think is good. Once you hit 15, anything above that, you're you're doing well. And 25% is awesome. Roadmap, we are pretty far down on the roadmap. Um, May to August is the token distribution and ICO round and development. Done. Also in August, so we're just about to hit it. Development and testing. Now, things get quick. November, they have their alpha release and testing. And then in January, beta release. So... Things are moving pretty fast. Uh, just over the next few months, they should have their beta out. Core team. Good sized team. Um, decent decent amount of people. Everyone looks good. They have their, their LinkedIn's all work on here. The team's from all over the world. Uh, United States, Russia, um, the Netherlands, England. Ironically, there is no uh, LinkedIn for Alex here. And the reason it's ironic is because he is the QA engineer. So he's in charge of quality assurance. He checks everything, and we can't check it. Um, it's not a big deal, though. The rest of the team I looked at, they're all all, uh, all, all pretty good. Um, advisors. Advisors are pretty good. Uh, this guy, he looks like he's super young, so I really checked him out. And, of course, now my self-esteem is hurt because there was no way I was anywhere near as successful as that guy when I was his age. Um Media ratings, ICO bench. ICO bench, um, they should have at least a four. Anything with four better, I think, is good. It's fine. They have a 4.4. 4, so and then they have higher, they have a five on one of the ICO uh, ratings, which is really, you know, it's amazing. But 4.4 4 is really good. Um, there's just some, like, quotes and testimonials from people that you can read through. There's a ton. Um, and then you can you can actually sign up and reserve your your XDAC name. 
which that is pretty much it on the site. Um, I went over their pitch deck uh, for creating and managing decentralized companies. Went over the problems of distribution or jurisdiction uh, solutions. Taking advantage of decentralized ledger technology, blockchain, um, automation, governance, workforce, finances, the, everything they offer, wallets, liability fund, automated payrolls, it's all all laid out there. Um, they want to put human owners and autonomous agents, bots, robots, AI together, toward together. To form the, uh, the company. Another thing that this would be good for is not just launching ICOs, but existing companies that want to move into the f into the future of technology and take take their existing companies onto the blockchain. And to uh, you know, like I said, they're wanting to expand. They're wanting to go global. But it's just so costly and so difficult. This is a, a viable alternative for some of the smaller companies to do that. Um, and this just goes over how in the beginning of the dot-com era, like the infrastructure stuff, um, computers, computer guts, uh, Cisco, that they built the infrastructure for Amazon, Google, for all these other companies to explode. Netflix, you can't have a Netflix if no one ever really was able to use the internet or had computers in their homes. Um, those are the things that really lead the, the infrastructure and the, and the groundwork for uh, for us to be where we're at, for me to be talking. There would be no YouTube. You know, I wouldn't be talking to you if, if these companies hadn't, uh, hadn't developed their technology first to, to get us to where we're at. Uh just some numbers, all the different entrepreneurs, 100 million startups each year. Um, the competition, Argon, they started back, uh, was it about a year ago? So about 26 minutes, with an ICO bench rating of 2.4. So even backwards, they have a higher higher rating. Um, this goes over the... Uh, the platform currency, which goes for the company creation, then merchant payments, payroll, liability fund, um, dispute resolution. So that's another thing. The incentive for those people usually, for the uh, the arbiters that that uh, settle the disputes, is they would get a, a portion of the of the tokens would be locked up, and then they would get that after they come to the resolution and profit distribution. They'll generate profits from transaction fees, which will be distributed back to the companies based on their participation. And then that just goes over the core team. That is it. Um, I'll leave a dis uh, link in the description to their site, and you guys can uh, can check that out. Also, leave any comments or questions that you have. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, I appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you guys in the uh, next video. Take care.